Welcome back to another Create Mon tutorial. Today, we're going over the easiest and cheapest mob farm that you can design really in the Create Mod. And if you've played vanilla Minecraft, you can probably tell that it is really similar looking to a lot of the vanilla mob farms. And that's because it is, I stole it. But there is one kind of big difference and it's this tube in the middle here that instead of pushing water to push all the mobs, it just spins around and knocks all of them off. This thing is super early game friendly. As you can see, it only really needs block, block and windmill. It also requires zero stress units. All of the ingredients to build this will be in the description down below, but the most expensive bit is going to be the item collection. And of course mobs are spawning here because that's how that works. The most expensive part is item collection. And here we're using andesite funnels since for some reason, belts will sometimes make the mobs not die. So andesite funnels are the best bet. And honestly, those are still not too, too expensive here. It's just one andesite alloy and a dried kelp gets you two and you need 25 here. To go over rates, this farm produces 15,000 items per hour, including all of these. So obviously the witches stuff up here, a couple of redstone, a bit of glowstone, sugar, sticks, and glass bottles. And then we get the real drops, spider eye, not too many, surprisingly. A bunch of string, rotten flesh, bones, arrows, and probably gonna be one of the most important ones, gunpowder. They're all pretty even at around 3,000 per hour. A little bit less string, and we can get into why that was an issue for this farm in the first place. But if you saw earlier when I was going over this part, you could see that there were a couple of spiders in here. That's because if they're falling and they catch onto the wall, they can stop themselves from taking damage. And that slows down the farm a little bit. To talk about how this works a little bit more, you can see these things are spinning around and they push all of the mobs into these gaps in the middle of the farm. And we need a two wide gap here specifically for spiders. Since spiders are two blocks wide, we can't just have a one block gap like we do on one of the sides here because obviously they wouldn't ever go in here. I have to be a little bit further away for them to spawn. But as you can see, the zombies will spawn, drop all the way down and get pushed into the center here. Again, you can replace these water streams with belts if you want. Did, however, feel better to use zero stress units at all and need zero rotational speed for this farm to work. Additionally, there will be a schematic in the description as per usual. Um, I just recommend building an AFK platform. If you're building this around sea level, I recommend putting the AFK platform at Y level 185. If you have not seen the vanilla version of, the, of this farm, let me tell you what is going on. So as you could see, we were up at the top there and now we have a bunch of mobs in here. This is what it looks like pretty much the whole time. When you're all the way up there, mobs spawn in a 128 block radius around you. And since that is just these spawning platforms, all of the mobs, all I think the spawn limit is 40, maybe 30 mobs at a time will spawn all on these blocks, get pushed off into the water and fall down to their death and their items will be collected. If let's say you're like standing over here or you're building this not over an ocean biome, there could be a bunch of other caves or like right there, other spawning spaces for them to spawn, reducing the rates quite a bit. So obviously if you would want the best rates, build it over an ocean biome with no land in a quite a big radius just for safety. We are gonna be building this farm, so I suppose we can get started. So we're going to go out to a area of the ocean where there is nothing else around. And obviously that is still nearby, but I'm not building this in a real survival world, so it's fine for me. You would want to have an area where there is no place for other mobs to spawn. This does include drowns and stuff like that. So if you can avoid it, avoid building it somewhere close to the top bit of the ocean. If you can find a deeper ocean like we do over here, that would be preferred. With that in mind, I'm actually gonna go a little bit over here just so that it's a little bit deeper and build up till you get to water level. This is gonna be by level 62 is where this block is. And you're just gonna build a little platform here so that you can access the items and deal with item storage and transportation once you do that. Now for the very base of the farm, we are going to build up two blocks and place our chests. These are our storage interfaces. Obviously, if you are building this, you'll probably want to set up some sort of better item transportation. If you're using other mods like storage drawers or if you can afford item vaults, I would definitely recommend something other than a bunch of chests. But for the cheapest possible and most early game friendly farm, I'm going to use just chests because you can get those really, really easily without 
a lot of mining. We're going to make a five by five grid of these chests and then directly above them, we are going to shift click on one T5 and the site funnels all facing downwards into the chests. Again, these chests can be belts or anything else that transports items, but I'm using chests because they are the cheapest and don't require any stress units. Around the andesite funnels, we're going to build a cobblestone wall around here. Again, you can use any block, but cobblestone I thought would be the cheapest. And you can even cut out these corners if you want to save some blocks. Then from these andesite funnels, we're going to build up 29 blocks. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. If you're building it at the same height as me, you should be at Y level 95. Once you get up to the top here, we're going to build six additional blocks. So seven blocks total. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to make a square that goes all the way around here. Once you're done, you should have a square that is 19 by 19 or seven by the five by five square by seven on each side. Next, we're going to grab some signs and place them all the way around the edge of this hole. This is because the water that we're going to place in later is going to be one block over the hole. So it'll end here. So we'll need signs to prevent it from flowing down and making the mobs not die when they fall. It doesn't need to be super precise. You just need a sign block on every edge block here so that if you like walked around, and tried to place blocks, you can't because there's going to be a sign in that area. We can test this later when we put in water. Water should not be able to fall down this hole. Now we can come to the edges of all of any of the sides and go up by one block here. We're then going to build across the entire way here, and then we're going to build this platform four blocks out. So this is already block number one, two, three, four. And that's all we need to do. We're then going to replicate that on all three other sides. So again, one block up, bring it all the way along here to the other end, and then four blocks. So that it is a total of four blocks deep. Once that's done, we can then place in the borders that go around this whole thing. We are going to want this to be bottom slabs because in the centers here, these will be spawnable blocks. So if we go up one, the roof on top of the farm will make this light level zero. So we're just going to have slabs here instead. That also makes this whole thing cheaper. And if you wanted to, you could have done this base platform as slabs as well. And for this edge, we're literally just going to go around the entire farm just like this, placing in bottom slabs so that the farm now looks like this and has a one block tall border around everything. Now we can place in the water. So we're going to have to go around and place water sources on every one of these blocks. If you don't have a bunch of water sources or think it might be easier to do it this way, you can definitely set up a temporary wall here and place in water so that it auto source blocks the middle blocks because then you can just grab from here, place it here, grab from there and keep doing that all the way along. And that might be a little bit quicker. And then afterwards, you can then remove these temporary blocks that we placed earlier. And you should see when all of these this water floats, it should end right over these signs that we placed in beforehand and no water should be flowing down. If you don't want to do it that way, again, you can just place in a bunch of water source blocks and they will all flow towards the center as expected. I will warn you that if you're placing all of these water sources and these blocks under here are slabs, you're going to have a tough time. So that's why mostly why I'm using blocks, because placing water with slabs is just going to make it that happen. And that is super annoying to deal with. So just place water along all of the edges here. And once we have all of that in, all of the water should be pointing directly towards the center here. And you, the only source blocks that should exist should be on this very edge on all four sides. Once we have the water in, we can now get in the actual spawning platforms. So to build the platforms, we're going to need to build up a few blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that is going to be our first spawning platform. Once that's in, we're going to need to find the center point of the farm. And that should be right about here. I think we can double, triple check this by going over two blocks from here. And then this block here is the center point. There we go. In the center point, we don't want to place any blocks at all for now, just so that we remember where this is. And if you want to, you can place in a oak plank here just so that we can remember where it is with 
this still being a full block here. And once we have this area, we're then going to build out from each side of it eight blocks total. So including this first cobblestone block. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to do that on all four sides. And you should have something that looks a little bit like this. We're then going to, on all of these sides, on the middle, extend these out by one block so that we have a three wide platform here. And then we're just gonna come around here and diagonally build to the next set of platforms here. So it makes a little diamond with three wide in the center here. And then we can fill in all of these blocks. And then we're going to need to repeat that process on the other three sides. Once this platform is built, you should have a 17 by 17 circle or eight one block in the middle and then eight on the other side we can verify this just by counting two four six eight perfect now's a good time to cut out the areas where the mobs are going to fall through the spawning platforms so this is going to be on opposite sides here on one side we're going to break out two blocks it doesn't matter what of the four parts of the circle you cut out this one's going to be two blocks and then on the exact opposite side we're just going to do the middle block here this two blocks is so that spiders can fall through. And then this one block is so that everything but spiders can fall through. And you want it on both sides just so that they have a faster chance of falling through. Because mobs spawn on this side and they get pushed all the way around and fall in here. That will be a lot slower than them being able to fall right here and die a lot quicker. Freeing up more spawning spaces for other mobs. In the middle here, we're going to build up our oak plank platform. And then we are going to build eight blocks over this way grab our windmill sails and follow these wood planks all the way over so that we have eight windmill sails, eight oak planks, all of which are going to be connected to this oak plank bit in the center here. And it's probably a good idea to glue this together right now. So we're gonna glue all of these oak planks here that connect with this center console. We're not gonna glue this center bit together just yet. From this point, we're gonna build this oak plank statue up 20 blocks total, so 18 more blocks after this. Apologies, we're actually gonna build 22 blocks up. And if you're building at the same height as me, you should be at Y level 125. We can always fix this later if this is messed up, but it's easiest to do it now, mostly because gluing in this whole rod is going to be a little bit annoying once mobs are spawning. To do this now, we're gonna grab this second to bottom block, so not this one here. We're gonna grab this second to bottom block with glue and fly all the way up and glue it to this top one at Y level 125. Then directly above this, we're gonna build another platform. So you're just gonna copy this exact format here. So leave these two blocks blank, same as these, leave both of these blank. And then we're just gonna build a, another floor here. Once you've done that, you should have this second platform that is identical to the first one. We are gonna change up how we place in the wind sails though. We are going to rotate it 90 degrees. So on this one, we're gonna place blocks directly over the one block gap here and then windmill sails on top of that. So you should have on the first floor sails going this way to the right and then forwards so that is rotated 90 degrees. And this is when it is turning, it will push all the mobs and then the mobs just won't fall directly on the other one. They'll be able to fall straight through. Then we just glue this together and we are good for this level. We're gonna continue this going up and we're gonna do this six more times or eight times in total. And there we go, those are all now in. You should have eight floors total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we can get onto the roof and the windmill bearing. The windmill bearing is gonna go directly on top of these oak planks here and you'll need to shift click it in so that it's facing towards them. One last check for all the glue in here. Mobs are gonna be spawning at nighttime, definitely, potentially during the day as well. But make sure that everything is glued together. And if you really want to, we can test this to make sure that everything is spinning. It won't do anything if it's not spinning properly, but it's a good time to test. It's good to test it before you put the roof on. Because if something isn't spinning, then that's bad. If it's not spinning, just check the glue. That's likely gonna be the issue. But for me, everything is spinning, so we should be good to go. The windmill bearing is in. And now we can place in the roof. It's gonna be a bottom slab, so that mobs can't spawn on top of it, of course. And this one is going to be quite a bit bigger than the spawning platform itself. For the ceiling, we're gonna build 22 blocks out total on all four sides. So this one cobblestone slab is one, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. It's obviously never bad if it's too big. It could potentially make spawning underneath it a little bit annoying, but that will happen anyway, really, for any blocks underneath these here. So I wouldn't worry too much about it being too big. It does need to be at least 22 blocks long in all four directions. So that's gonna be 45 blocks long total, including this middle point here. And once you have all of those in, we're gonna do the same thing that we did for these smaller eight by eight circles. And we are going to do one block out on either side. So it's three wide here. And then we're gonna go in diagonally a block and build all the way to the other tips of the circle. I guess circles don't have tips or edges, but you know what I'm saying, the other bits that we already built out previously. And it should line up directly. Once you expand both sides, it should line up directly so that it is diagonal all the way across to the other set. And once that's done, we're gonna fill in the four quadrants. And once that is in, you should see mobs spawning on these platforms. If you're able to go into spectator world, well, if you're able to go into spectator mode, you should be able to look at these blocks and check their light level. It's the light level of where you are standing. And as long as all of the edge blocks and the middle and everything has light level zero from the block and from the sky, then everything will be working as anticipated. For the last little bit of this farm, it's setting up the AF Click K platform and turning it on. Turning it on is kind of the big thing, so please pay attention to this. When you flick this windmill bearing and it starts turning underneath, you can see that it has lit up this area. That is because all of these blocks that used to be blocking the light are now no longer doing that. Because of that, we're going to need to encase this windmill bearing in cobblestone. And I would just recommend making all of these blocks non spawnable as well. You can still jump on top of them and everything like that. Now we need to make the spawning platform. As I mentioned earlier, you need to get up to Y level 185. You can do this with ladders, flying, scaffolding. I'm gonna use scaffolding because I think it's a cool block and it looks good. You don't have to obviously, and we are going to build up to Y level 185 as long as you're using the same Y levels as me. And we are now at Y level 185. We can place in some real floor. I would place down floor here and a roof as well for phantoms to not spawn and kill you. But this is your AFK spot. You can jump down and I guess die because that's how gravity works. Um, but you can get up with scaffolding or a ladder or any other block. You can fly up there if you have an elytra or other modded flight thingies. And this thing is already working. We can see down here mobs are spawning and being pushed in. If we head up to the AFK platform, we should be able to see Oh, of course, I did make a slight mistake here. I broke one of the cobblestone slabs to place the scaffolding. You're not allowed to do that. You have to make sure that the cobblestone fully encases the windmill bearing or otherwise light is gonna get in. You can check with spectator mode or just looking with your eyes, um, but make sure that that is set up correctly. Now, while I'm AFKing, we can head down with our spectator account and see this thing in action. You should see a bunch of mobs spawning and being pushed around. And this is what it's looking like. They should also almost all die from fall damage. If you're using weird Alex mob stuff like me, the super boosted feather falling uh, resistance guys won't die, but any normal mob from a normal mod pack will. You can set up a different system down here if you want to kill these like beefed up guys. Most of them have fire resistance, so campfires or anything like that won't actually fix it. But they will despawn pretty quickly, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. It doesn't affect the rates really at all. So that's the farm. It is working pretty well. We're going to get a bunch of resources here. Always make sure you light up the areas where things can still spawn, like this bottom platform here. But otherwise, we are good, and this thing is all done and working like crazy. So I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial of the, the easiest and cheapest mob farm that I can think of. You don't need dispensers. You just need some andesite funnels to pick up the loot and that's the most expensive part so thank you all so much for watching if you like this video be sure to like and if you have want more advanced stuff i have a bunch of tutorials on my channel you can maybe check those out or leave suggestions down in the comments and i will see you all in the next video peace